What is good y'all? Welcome back to my channel and today we have a fried chicken wings mukbang. These are from Golden City Chinese restaurant. Also got sweet and sour sauce here and some water off to the side. I'm also going to be uh, reviewing the movie The Birth of a Nation which came out in 2016. This was requested by Shimoni Ray. So Shimoni, thank you for uh, that request. But I'm going to get into this chicken first. Whole thing just fell in there. <laughs> they just slipped out my head. Oh well. Ha. Mm. Mm. I'm sure y'all didn't mind that thing falling in the sauce. I probably look like what? I think I bathed in the sauce. Mm. Get a little organized here, put all, put all the bones in one place. Mm. Mm. Hope everyone's having a great start to their week. Whatever you're doing, moving in positivity, moving in light. Mm -hmm. Doing things that make you happy. You know, spending time with family, whatever. It's the best stuff. All right. Mm. Thing was hot that's why i fell in there before like my pants was like Ew. whatever see you know this a different way here we go mm. Mm. that sweet and sour sauce just sets it off just sets it off I don't know what they put in that batter for these wings, but it can't be legal. That stuff is delicious. Delicious. So good. So I just got right back from the restaurant, came right back to the house, put these things out. I want to eat these things hot. That's how they're supposed to be eating. Mm. start up on another wing here and then we're going to talk about uh the birth of a nation very powerful movie very very raw we're gonna get into that in a second 
Let me just get a bite of this first. So the birth of a nation, again requested by Shimoni Ray. This was directed and it stars uh, Nate Parker and also Gabrielle Union as well. The movie came out in 2016. Now, it's not to be confused because it's literally the exact opposite of a movie of the same name that came out in 1915, which was a racist propaganda film put out by the Ku Klux Klan, basically to keep white people afraid of black people and to keep us divided and to keep their system they had running this movie I, 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 I like that he named it this first of all I like that he took he said you know what I'm gonna take that terrible ugly movie that and I'm gonna put it I'm gonna tell the real story about the true birth of the nation that they were trying to suppress and hide and that they didn't want to face and it took and it literally I didn't think about it I didn't even think about it that movie came out in 1915. This one came out in 2016. Literally almost 100 years apart. That's pretty crazy. I didn't even think about that. So The Birth of a Nation is the story of Nat Turner. Nat Turner is from Southampton County, Virginia. And uh, grew up in slavery. No. He had obviously a terrible and rough childhood. His father not being around him, but his father left him with some very profound words, basically telling him, You are you're a child of God, you are special. And he it, he took that to heart. Now he now and, and think about it like he took the name Turner. Turner was the name of the slave master who he belonged to, so to speak, you know, in that, uh, it's, it's, it's even ugly just to say that, but he took the name Turner. And so that was the name of the person who owned the plantation that his family worked on. And then it made me think, even thinking about that, made me think about Malcolm X, because Malcolm X disavowed his last name little because that wasn't his true last name that name got he didn't even know what it is because all those records were destroyed um so he that's why he took the name x so nat turner took that name now he they found out with him early on that he could read he had basic reading skills so the woman of the house she took it upon herself to help him learn how to read and focusing specifically on the bible And even more specifically, verses from the Bible that encouraged oppression. Hmm. So good. So Nat learned how to read and being he was in the house reading he got in tight and well not got in tight but he became friends so to speak with the boy of the house samuel turner who would later own the plantation so it takes place around the early like 1800s is where everything between like 1809 and like 1840 somewhere in there that's that's i think he was a boy like in 1809 something like that and it takes so about that time range so because he knows how to read he is, and he, he's he's treated a little bit differently than the other slaves. So he's 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 treated as a preacher, a pastor, and he is used to go to different plantations and speak verses of the Bible to the slaves of those other plantations. Because a big problem at the time was that 
they were worried about slaves rebelling and leaving and and these plantation owners slave owners they relied on they relied on their the free labor the slaves were providing and you know as we know they were getting treated like property and these people and they the slaves were worried these people oh they would act they're actually going to realize their human worth and get away so they Nat Turner that's where he came in So, but what happened, and obviously I think Samuel Turner was getting paid for this, um, he would go to different plantations in the county in Virginia, and Nat Turner would talk to the slaves at these plantations, and he would use verses from the Bible saying, obey your master, and, you know, basically things to keep them oppressed and keep them submissive and subservient to these people because this wasn't like this is a time where people are starting to realize things so and if they saw him he's an educated black man they would they're gonna see oh okay if he's saying this it must be true so that's where they were trying to come from so the bible it was being used to keep these people oppressed and submissive to their owner and Nat started to realize this. Now, there's a love story in there as well, which um, I want to touch on that before we get back to the crux of the story, the main point of the story. Um, there's a nice love story between uh, Nat and Gabriel Union's character, Cherry. And it's really, it was really, um, I like seeing those types of love stories. I'm not big on love stories, but I like those, like those are love stories that really mean a lot because these people had to go through a lot and risk a lot to even have a moment of any type of love between one another. And this naturally got realized that some terrible things happened to her, which were all led to his eventual rebellion. But the, the, the harshest scene in the movie, I'm gonna talk about in just a second, which in my opinion, I think for Nat was the straw um, that broke him. So Samuel Turner, who is the owner of the plantation at this point and he makes Nat feel like you're like you know you're you're my friend you're one of us and he, he tried like and I think Nat had some level of comfort in knowing that or at least in feeling that because obviously that's not true because he's not equal on the same page and as you'll see in the film if you watch it he'll throw him to the side to save his own hide in a heartbeat now, so he's, Samuel Turner has a struggling plantation, like a lot of them, so he brings people over, and this leads to, to Nat seeing, hearing about, and hearing directly terrible things, and these all lead to him just getting closer and closer to just having enough, and the one scene I think that was his deal breaker, in my opinion, and was the, probably the hardest scene to watch, and this is one thing I really liked about this movie, and I admit, it's hard to watch, And one thing, I, but it is what it is. And this is where I think Harriet, the movie Harriet that came out last year, slipped up and it got too Hollywood and too stylized and didn't show the realness. This movie obviously doesn't show all the realness, but it gets really in there. So there's a scene where Nat goes to a plantation and, you know, he's getting treated terribly. He's got, he's got, he's getting, he's getting dogs attacking him right from Jump Street and and he's like listen i'm i'm here to like and it's just like you see him walk around it's this man that's intelligent he's obviously even more intelligent than these than these uh these terrible people these slave owners but he walks around with his head down because i think he does it for two reasons one he's just been beaten into submission over his life and two it's that he doesn't want to see what's going on and what happened in this scene 
is there's these two slaves who are uh, starving in protest. They're not eating in protest. And whew, this dude goes in there and basically what he does to force feed one of them, and Nat has to see this, is absolutely just terrifying and grisly to see. And I'm like, oh, do I really want to see this type of stuff? But you know, not we need to see it because we need to know how horrible it really was and th this is again this is a Hollywood movie I'm sure there's things that he, you can't even go into they won't even let you go into and then right after that he goes to preaching to a group and in this scene he looks like he's a little bit more passionate he's talking about different uh, verses and so it, it, I feel like in that scene he wasn't using the same verses because like I said he was they were teach, telling him you can you don't and they cut out certain books of the Bible when they gave it to this like books of like Exodus and anything that would give them any sense of rebellion. You know, they, they edited the Bible, the which is already edited as it is. Um, but they edited the Bible in order to keep those people oppressed. And then eventually Nat forms this rebellion. He organizes in the best way possible. And there's a scene in the movie where the, the straw has broke the camel's back. And I don't want to ruin the movie. I don't want to give away too much. I do like want people to watch this. This is an important movie to watch. Um, there's a movie where he's just sitting there and he's processing everything he's seen throughout his life. He's just going through it. And he's in it. You can see him in it. And I originally watched this movie with Q very early on in our relationship, maybe a couple months in, and we were watching it, and she was locked in, and she was like, tap in, tap in. And I had heard that term before, but I had never really seen it. And I re realized then what tapping in meant. It means getting down to the truth of who you really are and your purpose. And that's what he was doing. He was seeing through all the nonsense all the BS. He was saying, I have to do this. I have to help these people. I have the ability. Because he, as someone who can read and it has access, off, he goes outside of the plantation. He has opportunity to organize and talk to people. And he does. And obviously there are harsh consequences and um, there's harsh truth to realize. But I, I, I do think the end, it could have been done a little bit better film-wise. The acting in this movie is very good. For period pieces, I know there's only so much you can do, but they do a really good job at capturing the time frame. It, like, we're, uh, I'll compare it again with the movie Harriet, which is also a period piece from a similar time. That felt more like I was on Hollywood sound, sound stages. This kind of felt like I was there in Virginia. I was in these places with these people. Mm. 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 So there you go. The movie was very heavy in material. I do recommend, it's definitely a movie I recommend. Just be aware going in, it is harsh, it is heavy, it's it's pretty raw. You're, you're, you're gonna see things that you probably don't wanna see. It's, it's so, and I, and I like that the director did that. And the director taking on the role of the lead character, I think, that's a risk because it can go bad. But like I think it was, it's his vision. He was telling this story from his perspective. So I, he knew as the actor of the main character in the film, he knew exactly what he wanted. So he's the one that can deliver it the best. His acting skills. I don't know if he acted in any other films, but his acting skills in this movie were very good.
the love story the love story portion of the movies are is necessary because you need to see the human part of these people you need to see that okay the, he obviously he he's help he's gonna start this rebellion and everything but he's also he's human he fell he falls in love he wants to love and I, I, I so I did enjoy that aspect of the film another thing I like that I never even really thought about throughout going to school for you know years you know all you know having you know every year in february going to school during black history month we would do one thing or another in history class to honor somebody tell a story write write a paper it would but yeah the movie is very well done it was very sad to see how the bible and how religion was used to oppress these people and keep them submissive and subservient. But it was also very telling to see that someone like Nat Turner, who had admittedly limited resources, took the resources that he had and tried to do something amazing. Anybody who tries to start a revolution and has the courage to organize it, because you know the chances of you succeeding are slim and none. Every, every, any revolution that's ever happened. You know that the, you know, the powers that be are not going to let this happen. And you succeeding is very, the chances are very slim. So for him even attempting this is to be commended. And he is, you know, he's a true hero. He's a huge, huge part of American history. And very sad what happens to him, but I'm glad uh, Nate Parker took the time and effort, and it had to be really hard for him as an African American to make a film like this, to have to, you know, put actual human beings who are actors in these situations and have the camera focus on them and get you i need you to get in this character and and, and, on, and on the flip side the people who had to act as the slave owners like these people have to put on a role as the most detestable human beings you know what i mean that has to be a very challenging thing but the, like i said acting very good across the board no issues at all there Yeah, Nat was just doing what he thought was right. Or what was right, not even what he thought was right, what is right. You know, you, he quickly realized that he ain't he ain't friends with these people. Though though the the owners like like Samuel, even though he they grew up as boys together. They're, 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 they're not the same. And when once he realized that, I, there's, a, there's so many little straws in there that finally, for lack of a better term, broke the camel's back. And he had just had enough. It just piles up and piles up. And then you keep burying it. You keep burying and then that, that What you're burying eventually gets up to a point where you can't bury it anymore and you got to be real. These little baby wings. Let me open up one of these. Oh, this ain't never wing. Oh, well, you know what? Get my can out of that. Those little tiny wings.
everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate your time spending a few minutes with me today for this mukbang and hearing me talk about this uh, movie, which I definitely recommend. So please uh, check it out if you see it, if you want to stream it, whatever. I will see you guys again soon. Until then, please take care and be well.